Okay, good afternoon. Welcome to Market Wrap number 224. Stuart Williamson here at the helm. Shock headlines. It's a Tory legacy. It's a Tory scandal. It's a Tory outrage. Landlords to be banned from renting out homes. That's what they're saying at the Liverpool Labour Conference this week. So watch on and you hear a bit more about it. First, we're just going to cover some of the questions we've had in from last week's Market Wrap. We had one from Matthew Sprite, 4217. Rents will go up in London, but we'll also push renters outside London pushing up prices as well. Absolutely, it's a, it's a wave effect. You know, the further you go out of London, that will go up too. I hear that Norwich is turning into a good investment location because people can live there cheaply and they can get into town for a couple of days a week. So it's happening everywhere. Karma Coma, one, two, three. I don't know where these email addresses come from. I'm becoming concerned that net is tightening on landlords regarding interest rate relief. In my view, there's a risk that interest rate relief on buy-to-let properties in limited companies is next in a government's crosshairs. I'm not entirely sure about that. You know, the benefit of having a buy-to-let company is the transparency, i.e. the government can see who owns it and see what's going on, and that's what they want. So I think the transparency will outweigh the tax benefits. And if I'm in Shoshana, I live in a desirable town in Kent, on the Kent coast, in a good address. There are usually three, four properties on my street, including mine, that are out there for sale, but they're not selling. My three bed house has been on the market since January. One of the houses has been sold even longer. And it's a great pie area, population, infrastructure, employment growth that we always use, with superb links to London's fabulous amenities and so on but not one offer. I thought people were waiting for the budget. What's going wrong? So it's interesting about Kent. Average house prices in Kent are 421,000 pounds. Uh, they've fallen by 3% over the last year, but there are certain idiosyncrasies within that. And if you look, for example, at Margate, I don't know if that's where you live, it's gone up by 104% from 2013 to 2023. So that's a huge rise. In fact, it's the highest in the UK. At the same time, all coastal property prices are at least 10% higher than they were than they are uh, not at the coast. If you're within 30 minutes, you expect to pay at least £10,000 more as a minimum. Why is that? Because people like to go, be able to go down to the sea. They like that concept. And the concept of that during COVID was even bigger. So now what we're finding is that people who moved to the coast during COVID, thinking they could work from home all the time, I find it's not quite as easy. So they're trying to sell. And I have stories of properties in Hastings that have been sold for 20% below the price they were bought for just before COVID. It is an issue, that is an issue. Secondly, in Margate, bizarrely enough, because of the change in demographics and employability factors, crime is 79% higher than anywhere else in the UK. And Margate's, obviously Margate's in Kent, so that's huge. Thirdly, a lot of pro pro properties on the Kent coast are second homes. And as of 2025, April I think it is, the Leveling Up and Regulating Act will allow councils to charge an extra 100% on council tax for second homes. And I think that is going to be having a big effect. People will be thinking of, should I buy down there? And I think, well, perhaps not such a great idea. And then finally, as I said, post-COVID, that's what's happened on the coastal locations. So what you've got to do is try and find ways to make your house a little bit more uh, enticing than other people's. Okay, looking at rents now, uh, The Guardian reports that major development is forecasting rental increases that will outpace wage growth over the next three years. This is reported by the Resolution Foundation, who are a very well-trusted and well-known foundation. They say that rents will increase by 13% by 2027. That's 4.2% per year. It exceeds the 7.5% rise in worker earnings expected over the seven period. So, greater strain on, strain on households especially if there's less and less stock out there it's going to be more difficult drivers of the rent increases have been the economic recovery basically the increase is particularly impactful on people between 30 and 49 that can't get into the market and is they are now a significant part of can't get into the purchasing market they're now a significant part of the rental market what does this mean for investors combination of rising house prices and rent increases signals strong demand in both ownership and rental markets However, affordability is a critical issue for renters, especially with wage growth falling, failing to keep pace. For investors, it's highlights the need to be especially strategic when choosing your properties. Okay, so rents are not going as quickly as they were, but according to the Re Resolution Foundation, they are still cranking it. All right, so that's two bits of news uh, on that. Just a bit of information about what our readers are saying, a bit about the renting. Now, back to the Tory legacy, Tory scandal, Tory outrage. Basically, Miliband has said this week at the Labour conference in Liverpool 
that landlords will have until 2030 to spend up to £10,000 on their eco upgrades. He has vowed to ban all landlords, landlords from renting out properties that do not meet the EPC standards by 2030. So you must have a grade C or higher, or you're out. And he said it's banning landlords from renting out energy inefficient homes would lift one million families out of fuel poverty. We all know that the poorest people in our country often live in cold, drafty homes. Many rent from private landlords below decent standards. And this is where he gets his great quote, Tories of Tory legacy, Tory scandal, Tory outrage. I don't seem to recollect Tony Blair doing very much on the rental market when he was around. I think, again, it's just another stick to beat a powerless opposition with. And it's, a, it's bad that my own view, just my own view, the view from APW Towers, it's bad that that's what it, politici- politics would come to. Basically, EPC certification, if you don't know, is a rating on their uh, energy tax efficiency. So you've got to have a C by, 20, well, by 2030. Uh, anything below C at the moment, uh, an E or below, is not allowed to be rented out at all. What are the sort of things you're going to need to do? Put in steam pumps, put in better insulation, put in roof uh, insulation, wall information, floors, more efficient energy to make it all work properly. There has been some talk, I think the Committee for Fuel Poverty suggested landlords could be offered tax offsets for improvements or loans in low rental areas. I'm sure there'll have to be something on that because I think as I mentioned quite a few times previously, when I have telephoned our local people at the council to ask about our EPC standards in the UK and they couldn't give me a clear answer what was required and when it was required by. And he's coming out and saying it needs to be done by 2030. Kingfisher, the B&Q owner, has come out and said the UK is facing a shortage of qualified tradespeople to meet these net zero standards, okay? And they need to re- recruit another 160,000 by 2030. So this is the whole point, isn't it? It's a knock-on effect of everything. You know, everything you do has an effect. I used to work with a tax advisor who said, when the government t- takes a piece of the tax law to close one hole, then behind that hole, it's an elastic uh, tax law. Behind that hole, the elastic will stretch and another hole will appear. And this is what does happen. The more changes you make, the more knock-on effects it has. Um, I think it was a great quote from uh, uh, Russian despots. You know, he was asked what effect the French Revolution would have on France. And uh, he said, well, we don't know. We probably won't know for another 100 years. And it's the same with Brexit. It's the same with many of these things. And one thing we do know, though, just going back to the Labour Party and their... uh, plans for building new properties and locations. If you remember, I think three weeks ago we talked about, they had said they're going to build out, build a lot of properties in Cleveland, uh, County Durham, which is quite uh, cheap and there's a lot of land there. And it says, this article in the, uh, the Telegraph this week, Cleveland and the surrounding areas may seem idyllic at first glance, especially if you want to express, escape the hustle and bustle of city life. Now I'm from Whitby, which is just south of Cleveland, only sort of 30 miles away, I can judge to that. And if lower house prices in this part of the world are thrown in, it could prove tempting, which is what the government is saying. Move there, it'd be great. However, there are other factors at play here which might make, might make it one to avoid. The area has a very high crime rate. In fact, the area has the highest burglary rate in the UK at 8.8 per thousand people. This rate has increased by 10% compared to 2023. So, um, knock on effects. It's all this. As I always say, stick to your pies and stick to simple middle of the road stuff. Where is investment going in? Where is not being overdeveloped? Where is there infrastructure growth? You know, where is there employment growth? At good locations. I was reading an article this morning about Digbeth Studios that are being built in Digbeth in Birmingham. It's a million square feet apparently, possibly going up to three million. Backed by the BBC, I think. Steven Spielberg, Stephen Knight from Peaky Blinders, quite a few Hollywood people involved. And Steven Spielberg said, if I can get the talent to Birmingham within an hour, they will come. And that's what HS2 will do. So that sort of Birmingham is a good location. You know, the Midlands, Manchester, Nottingham, they're good locations. Things might happen in the future to have a negative effect, but it won't have such a negative effect of, say, Margate with second home tax or the crime down there. So there we go, that's market wrap number 224. Thank you for uh, watching. Do like, subscribe and uh, send some questions in. It's been great getting the questions because it makes me think for a change, which I'm not a great thinker. Take care, all the best, cheerio.